TV and Wikibon.org present Oracle Open World 2011. And now, host John Furrier and Dave Vellante on the Cube. Okay, we're back at day two for Oracle Open World. This is SiliconAngle.tv, SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of Oracle Open World 2011. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com. And I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and we're here live in the QLogic booth, John, day two. Uh, yeah. Another big day expected. We are here inside the Cube. The Cube is our flagship telecast where we go out to the uh, top of industry events and extract a signal from the noise and bring you news, coverage, all kinds of analysis and, and insight to what's happening on the ground. We provide multi-day coverage, eight hours a day. This is day two. We'll be broadcasting all day tomorrow, Wednesday, uh, here at Oracle Open World, and we're excited to be here mainly because Oracle is the 800-pound gorilla in the enterprise computer industry. Larry Ellison, the uh, famous CEO billionaire, on stage yesterday giving the keynote, or Sunday night giving the keynote, Dave. Uh, Oracle is a big player. Uh, Larry is like one of the last standing tech giants still around the industry, leading his company, billionaire, yacht sailor, brought America's Cup to San Francisco, and uh, his company is a sales machine, with a lot of market power, um, huge ecosystem, and uh, you know, we, we love covering Oracle because one, it's an exciting company to cover, and two, they just have a lot of market power and everyone is afraid of Oracle, and uh, more importantly, there's a lot of business opportunity around Oracle, both within their own ecosystem and also around their competitive environment. So the competitors are gunning for Oracle, their ecosystem's making a ton of money off Oracle, and we're here to cover it. And, and today's a big day for Oracle because they're going to try to compete with Apple's big iPhone 5 announcement, and we'll be covering that live with folks in our news desk at siliconangle.com with all the analysis from what Apple's doing. Obviously, Apple and Oracle have a similar positioning where Oracle has copied Apple inside the enterprise to try to be that fully integrated, engineered, special purpose platform, and uh, we'll see if they're going to be as successful as Apple. Yeah, so um, you're right, John. Oracle has tons of market power. Everybody is afraid of them. Of course, we at theCUBE are not afraid of them. Um, <laughs> you, last year at Oracle Open World, John, you coined the, uh, the phrase, Oracle is like a telco extracting rent from its customers, and that really kind of sums up <laughs> what Oracle does. And now, the, having said that, they spend a lot of money in R&D, over $4 billion a year, and they do have some innovations and really good packaging that uh, has disrupted the industry a little bit. So they. They live off the maintenance revenue, yeah. but they've been growing the company very nicely. It's quite impressive from a financial standpoint. We'll be covering Oracle Open World like a blanket. We're here on the ground floor at Oracle. Again, day two of three-day coverage, extensive in-depth with insight, analysis, opinion. Obviously, we're not afraid to share that opinion, and we would not be able to be here if it wasn't for the, the support of QLogic. QLogic was amazing to give us uh, their booth, half of their booth, uh, and connectivity to, to stream live, uh, with continuous coverage. Great folks, QLogic, great company. Um, competes against Emulex, they crushing Emulex every day of the week. Look behind me, you'll see the QLogic logo. Uh, we love QLogic, so big shout out for QLogic. Also want to shout out to Intel and EMC, who kicked in some support for in-depth spotlights around backup and recovery and virtualization, and also the future of the data center, where Intel uh, will continue to dominate the chip, semiconductor business, and as it becomes more software integrated. So we're going to be doing some in-depth spotlights, and they provided some underwriting support. So we want to thank Intel, we want to thank EMC, and we want to thank QLogic, Dave. Without their support, we would not be here. John, a couple quick uh, news points today. You mentioned the, uh, the, the Apple iPhone 5, uh, uh, Red Hat who we had on yesterday bought Gluster, uh, an open source, basically software-based file system, NAS file system, so that gives Red Hat storage. Yeah. So interesting to see uh, Red Hat competing directly in the storage side, and then, uh, uh, of course, John Fowler was up there this morning. He's the head of the, the hardware business at Oracle, talking about Sun's uh, cloud management stack. Uh, Dell announced an integration with that from Force 10. We're going to have Force 10 on later on today and ask him what that's all about. Yeah, and again, the news, the top of the hour here is news as worth noting about Gluster, a company that we've covered inside the cube, was purchased by Red Hat, who was also on yesterday talking about platform as a service, for $135 million. So here we have a private company in Gluster um, been taken out by Red Hat to strengthen their unstructured uh, portfolio and products, and that's a good move for Red Hat, mainly because the rage of the show here is not so much cloud, it's about big data. And so the theme here at Oracle, really, Dave, is all about big data. 
You know, last year Oracle was pumping up cloud. This year it's about big data, and we're seeing that. We're seeing acquisitions now happening, and the big acquisition again, Gluster being bought by Red Hat for $135 million. Um, VC back company taken out uh, to add to the uh, Red Hat portfolio, of, of which we know Red Hat, um, real dominant in the Linux market, but also has platform as a service with OpenShift and a bunch of other things like JBoss, et cetera. So the open source movement continues to be a big force, even amidst the Oracle proprietary stack, and that's again the theme uh, here at Oracle Open World is big data and open source with Java 1 going on. And, and Java 1 really isn't getting the headlines that, that, that um, Oracle's getting, but from what we can found out on the floor yesterday and last night, Java 1 has been a huge success. Talking to top engineers over there, great networking, people are recruiting engineers, a lot of talent being acquired, um, great stuff going on in the open source community, Dave. I think that's a highlight that really isn't getting the mainstream press attention, is that the open source movement is absolutely exploding and Red Hat again buying Gluster is the news yesterday, and uh, Jason from Red Hat yesterday pointing out that open source is a good model, it is moving fast enough to meet the demand for these cloud solutions. Yeah, Jason Anderson was an excellent guest, I tweeted out this morning, he was I thought one of our best guests yesterday, came over from a you know, perspective from Java One, great application development views, and um, here's an example with the Gluster acquisition of Red Hat building out its stack, um, really competing uh, for more of the storage pie. 135 million, not a ton of dough, uh, but for a company that really is just getting started and just yeah. getting off the ground, I mean, it's and, pretty good. Yeah, and the uh, other news uh, yesterday, uh, Fusion IO, a company that we cover, um, and then more CUBE alumni, we're going to talk to the CEO inside the CUBE here at Oracle Open World, David Flynn, announced their second generation of IO memory. Fusion IO, obviously, in the flash SSD storage, a key component of the overall cloud performance equation. Larry Ellison clearly talking about performance in his, in his keynote, Dave, and Fusion IO is one of those companies that's at the center of the performance revolution by bringing solid state uh, drives down to a performance level never seen before. They're announcing, uh, yesterday they announced their second generation of their IO memory architecture. So again, Fusion IO continues to pump on all cylinders. Fusion IO went public, great success story, um, and just continues to lead the marketplace in SSD and flash. Yeah, John, you made the point yesterday that the Sun keynotes were a lot of speeds and feeds, or the Oracle keynotes were a lot of speeds and feeds, very Sun-like. Um, uh, contrast that with when we were at Sapphire, very much a business value message. Uh, but you know that plays, I guess, with this audience, and, um, and, and Flash is a big part of that speeds and feeds message. Yeah, and what we're going to hear from QLogic here, um, we're going to have one of their uh, executives on theCUBE here. I'll see QLogic, you can see the logos behind me, big supporter of theCUBE, also is a performance-driven company. So you're going to see um, two things go on in this business, Dave, over the next six months to a year, and that is the constant performance messaging. We can perform, we can deliver, and one with vision, right? You're going to see vision, and you're going to see the future, but also people are going to focus on the present, which is performance. Uh, Larry Ellison talked about Affiniband being, being part of their parallel architecture, storage with SSD and with Fusion I.O. and obviously the database wars going on between unstructured and structured data, all talking about performance and really leveraging the use of data. And it's a real fun time. I'm really excited by this and I think Oracle has an opportunity to, to lead there, but also they have the temptation of being too monolithic and too proprietary, so we're going to watch that. So you can see John on the screen up here, we've got uh the Apple uh, keynote uh, for the iPhone announcement. Now I understand, Mark, that they're not streaming that live, so somebody in the audience has put this out there? CNN. CNN oh, okay, is, uh, I guess. Oh, so uh, CNN, CNN got the rights to. <laughs> so no Tim Cook, so what's notable about the Apple announcement uh, today is I have a lot of friends who work at Apple, both on the iPad design team and uh, close to Steve Jobs and the leadership over there, and this is really the first real big announcement where Steve Jobs hasn't been a big player in the announcement. This is really Tim Cook's coming out party. Um, they're doing global announcements all across the world, and um, Apple is under great leadership. They've done a good job with the succession plan of a CEO, and really this is about the iPhone 5, and I, I think Apple will continue to be a performance leader both on the financial side with the stock and on the products. Tim looks very good there. Um, kind of avuncular, you know, looks, looks well trimmed, you know, kind of jobs like in his mannerisms. So, uh, you know, good luck to him. I, yeah, you know, so we I mean, wish him the best. And the iPhone continues to revolutionize the business, you know, with applications and on big data and storage. We are living in a massive com consumerization business. We've been talking about consumerization of IT for over two years now on the Cube. We've also been talking about cloud, mobile, social. Again, these are the top big trends. Add big data and analytics to the equation. We have the major uh, perfect storm kind of variables coming together.